G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today we are doing the second video of a new video series that I've started because I don't have a life uh, where I'm going through each of the 18 clubs and uh, similar to my last series where I was profiling their best 22 in immediate depth, I thought uh, for a new video series I might do a little projection of three years into the future. Uh, the reason I picked three years, I mean, it's kind of arbitrary, but I wanted it to be removed enough from the modern day 22, where you can see some improvements and fruits from like the recruitment over the last couple of years for these clubs. There'll be a handful of retirements, but it's not so far in the future that it becomes a complete gamble as to, um, you know, which players may or may not be there. Um, and, you know, if you're looking five years in the future, for instance, there's four, four drafts you've got to overlook, or five drafts even that you've got to overlook before you plot their best 22. So what I've done is looked at three years in the future and today we're going to be doing the Western Bulldogs and uh, part of that process is going through their senior list or their overall list and working out which players are unlikely to be there and then extrapolating some improvement from younger guys that are currently in the squad um, that are not in the 22 and backfilling them that way. And uh, I guess the point of the exercise is to see how well-placed clubs are. Uh, the way things currently stand three years from now Bearing in mind, obviously, a huge limitation of this is that I can't, you know, anticipate trades. I can't pick draft picks in the future. There's a few father sons and stuff like that to work through, academy players. But other than that, uh, the point of the argument, or uh, the point of the video series, is not to predict as much as it is to analyze, you know, what the medium term future might look like for different clubs and where they might, you know, be poised in the premiership race, so to speak. So, um, like I said, I'm going to do the Western Bulldogs today before I start. Would you mind doing me a huge favor and subscribing to the channel? I'm trying to get to 25,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Uh, it would be a very nice achievement uh, if I can hit 25K and 20K in the same year. I really appreciate the support. The video series seemed to go well the last one, um, and I'm hoping this one will be successful too. So without further ado, let's get into the Bulldogs. So obviously the Doggies, um, I won't go through a whole season review, obviously, like I did in the last video series. Uh, but it's important to note that right now we probably see a mature team that probably should be in contention for finals looking at their list profile. Uh, so it's an interesting one to look at what will happen in three years because part of this exercise is, like I said, I'm going to go through and look at players who likely won't be there in three years. And the list for the Bulldogs is fairly extensive. So what I've done is I've kind of tracked everyone's age to round one 2027. Um, and, you know, based on their age, I'll decide whether they're going to be likely there or not. And there's a few line ball decisions, but uh, let's go through them. So Liam Jones will be 36. I have him not available, probably retired. Taylor Durea, 35. Alex Keith, 35. Liberatore, 34, as will be Johannesson, 34. Rory Lobb, 34. Adam Trelaw, 34. Anthony Scott, 32. And James Harms, 31. Now, James Harms could be line ball. 31, he might still be playing. Uh, I, I removed him from this analysis uh, anyway. Jack McRae is another borderline one. He is born in 94, but he will be 32 by round one 2027. I've kept him on the list because I think because of the caliber of the player that he is, there's a good chance he's probably still going to be in and around the best 22 by then. Um, of course, I could be wrong, but I decided that one probably is a little bit too far-fetched to not include him in this analysis. Some other players that I've kept in, uh, but are around about that 30 roll mark. Marcus Bontepelli will be 31. Caleb Daniel and Bailey Dow will also both be 30. So they're players that are available. So I've taken out all the other players from their you know, best 22 to best 25. And I've had a crack at a future best 22, which I will now get on the screen. Okay, so there is a lot going on in this particular graph. Okay, so let me explain, first of all, what the colors mean. So green are players that I am pretty confident on a personal level will be part of their best 22 in three years time. The yellow ones are either speculative or I'm just not too sure. Um, as a general rule, I have generally put unproven key position players in yellow. So an example there is Sam Darcy, who was, uh, what was he picked two originally? Uh, obviously there's a really good chance he's gonna be a very good player. Having said that though, if they're a relatively uncapped um, key position player, I'm just gonna automatically put them in yellow just because there is a little bit more doubt. I mean, there's doubt about medium sized players as well, but um, yeah, at the end of the day, we don't need to get caught up too much in the yellows. That's just my opinion. What we're really looking for is the balance of the list and stuff like that. The other thing to know, know what's going on is the numbers. So I've got their age as the first number slash an estimate of how many games experience they will likely have three years from now. And as I explained in my Eagles video, um, I have got, you know, if they're a best 22 player, I've roughly gone three years from now, 20 games a season, allowing for injuries and suspension. Um, if they're a fringe 22 player, you know, I'll consider how much competition for spots they've got. 
and you know in some cases it might have just gone 10 per year or something like that again not really worth getting too caught up in but the age and uh, experience level is important because we're trying to assess how good this team is likely to be so for instance there riley sanders at 22 and 60 games experience will probably be a handy player usually that's around the threshold where players start to move from prospect to being good on in general generalizing obviously so let's look at the team as a whole okay let's start with the back six so again, James O'Donnell and Jed Buzzinger have got in yellow just because they're relatively uncapped uh, or, or, or un- inexperienced key position players. Uh, I've got James O'Donnell, who I do think is going to be a good player for the record. Again, don't get too caught up in the yellow. Uh, he should be best 22, but he's only played 12 games, so I didn't think it was you know quite right to put him in green. And Buzzlinger has not played a game. However, I do think those are two pretty good young key position defenders. Um, the ones that are, you know, if they're still there, are likely going to be best 22 players. Caleb Daniel, Bailey Dale, and Ed Richards. Pretty comfortable with that. And Nick Coffield is one who probably I just kind of sandwiched in there. I have no idea what to expect from Nick Coffield. I don't know how realistic 80 games is, but um, I guess I can go through the players that I left out later in this uh, exercise. Then we got the midfield. And it's still going to be a strong midfield. So if Jack McRae is still there at 32 years of age and 290 games of experience, um, you know he's probably you know still going to be a handy player. Maybe not you know top level, but uh, he'll still make the side. As will Bontempelli at 31. Strikes me as a player who could still play deep into his 30s or into his mid 30s. But his role might change. He might play a bit more forward. But I've chucked him in the midfield, and we should be seeing a prime Bailey Smith here on the wings. Poulter and Bailey Williams are. Uh, Maybe I'm a little harsh there on Bailey Williams. Could he be green? I'm not too sure. Uh, Caleb Poulter has shown some good signs this year as well. Uh, but overall, the midfield is okay. Uh, naturally, they'll probably want to keep topping it up. But I think um, you know Sanders, Smith, Bontempelli, and McRae as the fourth is still going to be a good midfield in three years. Then look at the forward line. The two key forwards I'm pretty confident on. Uh, you know, Aaron, Aaron Norton is no longer a speculative prospect. Uh, and Jamara has shown enough for me to be like, yeah, he's going to be at least best 22 in three years' time. And Cody Waitman, again, I think is a pretty talented small forward. So Sam Darcy, I put as a question mark. The other thing with Sam Darcy is, I will admit, as an Eagles fan, I'm not 100% sure exactly where he's going to play. Um, and that's the other you know, battle that the Bulldogs have as an ongoing thing to consider is the development of guys like Sam Darcy and Jordan Croft, two father-son key forward slash ruck in Darcy's case, who could both play back. Um, and it, I've heard both of them described as potentially playing back. So um, I don't know. But although the way this team shapes up, I'm, I, I think a Norton, Jamara, Yugel, Hagen, Sam Darcy uh, combo could work. Could work. So I don't mind that. I do like the look of Charlie Clark as a, as a prospect. However, he hasn't played a game yet, I don't think. But I do think he... I did like him in his draft year. And Arthur Jones has shown a bit. So uh, it's a decent forward line, it uh, has to be said. Particularly the talls. On the bench there, Riley West, you know, he's... Uh, He's been a decent impact player for them at times uh, without really ever entrenching himself in the 22, but by 26, maybe that's the case. Jordan Croft, again, I've estimated 15 games in his first three years. You know, he hopefully won't needed, be needed much more than that, uh, so he gets time to settle. But by 21, he's probably ready to be in this 22. Latham Vandermeer will still be around. Joel Frazier and Oscar Baker were the next two that I've uh, put on the bench there. And I will point out as well some players that like will probably still be on the list, but I don't really know how to assess or... I do, and I just left him out. So Buku Kamas, like he could be around there. Lockie Bramble, I didn't even know that they recruited Bramble. I must have missed that. Uh, but he is on the list on Footy Wire at least. I really hope Footy Wire hasn't screwed me over there. Uh, but I've just chucked him, you know, as an interchange, uh, as a uh, backup depth player anyway. I don't know much about Dominic Benendo, Bedendo, sorry, and Harvey Gallagher or Luke Cleary. So I will forecast my ignorance there uh, but by all means let me know in the comments because part of the reason I do this exercise is to get more in touch with teams and and learn so if there's a, if there's a player out that I've missed out that you think is worthy of being this 22 please let me know because I'm not a prophet there's no way I can nail this Aiden O'Driscoll was the unlucky one between him and Frazier I preferred Frazier as a draft prospect Lachlan Smith will be a 21 year old rock they're probably not going to need him before then Ryan Gardner I still have around but ideally as depth if they get Buzzlinger and um, O'Donnell as the two key backs. Maybe he slots in as a third tall defender. Maybe they don't need him, but maybe his depth, I'm not too sure. And Riley Garcia, I've also put on this team. So uh, that is mapping out my 22. Actually, I should should say, I've blatantly put 24 there. I did the same thing in the Eagles video. Uh, I just thought it was a bit more worthwhile to have a bit of a bigger team to to map out a few more options. But overall... um, one way to assess the team is how green it is. Uh, and I mean literally, but how much green is on the screen there. 
And I would say that, you know, there's still real top end talent there. You know, a lot will depend on, on how some of the vet- veterans are playing. McRae, Bontempelli, Bailey Dale, Caleb Daniel, if they're still playing high level uh, football, then this team could be really good. And I could I could foresee Bailey Smith as a midfielder becoming one of the best midfielders in the competition. I think he does have that top end potential. And Riley Sanders does seem like a safe bet to be a really good midfielder. So the midfield looks sweet. In, in fact, the key positions uh, posi- uh, spots look sweet. Obviously, maybe maybe a genuine wingman is someone they look at. I know they recruited O'Driscoll and Frazier, who are technically wingmen as well, and Oscar Baker's on the on the bench there as well. So, overall, like, how do we forecast this team will be going? I think as long as Bont's on the on the on the list, there is a good chance the Bulldogs will be aiming for a premiership. Um, I, I just feel like they want to strike while Bont and Pelly's playing because he is a generational player, probably the best Western Bulldogs player that I've ever seen. I say that with absolutely no pre-thought, but I think he is. And he's the clear best player in the competition, in my personal opinion. So what other moves could they do to um, to to ensure that their premiership window is still open by the time Bontempelli is 31? From a midfield point of view, they're pretty sweet. Maybe just some like a, a high-level wingman. Um, you know, the third defensive spot there with Caulfield is obviously still up for grabs, but he was a, a former top 10 pick. Maybe he could find that potential but generally when players miss a lot of injury or miss a lot of play uh, games through injury them realizing their potential later in their career it does get a little tricky but i could be wrong on that one and of course this exercise does get uh, you know undermined by any potential trades you know technically tim, tim english is still a chance to leave he's a free agent this year but then i suppose the point of this exercise is pointing out that maybe they don't really have a ready-made solution for him uh, if he goes equally you know talk of bailey smith leaving the club um then there's also uh, jamara who's going to be out of contract and clubs are going to go hard for him this year i'm not saying any of them will necessarily leave but you can see looking at this 22 the hole that it would potentially create if any of these players did leave and uh, they would need it to find a way to backfill them pretty fast but anyway guys that is my take on the western bulldogs in three years uh, to summarize you know i still think that team is competitive for finals but it doesn't necessarily look like a premiership competing team but again, we can't really forecast that too well. Like We can't even predict who's going to win the premiership next year, let alone in three years. Uh, but generally, we, we can assess the profile. I think it looks fairly strong. Um, you'd want those talls to really find their potential. But thankfully for the Bulldogs, um, you know, some of them are first round draft picks, you know, most of them actually. So they've invested in talls clearly. I think the small forward types are pretty strong. Um, overall, it's a reasonably balanced list. But let me know your thoughts. Uh, and Bulldogs fans, you know, what, what's something I've missed? Um, well, whether or not you're a Bulldogs fan, let me know if there's something I've missed and something you'd like to add to this conversation. But as always, hope you're enjoying the content, guys. Uh, let me know if you want me to continue this series. I'm probably going to continue it anyway, but it's nice to know that people are enjoying it if I am going to keep doing it. So thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.